Welcome to my studio. Today I thought I'd discuss what seems to be the most difficult part of any brush painting, the leaves. I've already discussed painting bamboo and bamboo leaves. And you know that's a movement from the shoulders. You do not move your fingers at all. You land and take off, land and take off, land and take off. Next, let's study the wisteria leaves. And we love to paint the wisteria. We can do these beautiful blossoms. And somehow, when we get to the leaves, it's panic time. If you get a chance to observe how wisteria grows, that will help you a lot. And let me tell you that when the leaves come out fully formed, they have a long stem that's something like that. You'll want to use your detail brush to do the stem and try and keep it at this width so it doesn't get any wider than that. And then at the end of each stem, we have one leaf that's no pressure, press, and then release. And then you have a series of leaves on either side of that stem, like so. And notice I'm repeating that no pressure, press, and release. And notice, too, that they get smaller as we go into the distance. And you could continue that on. And also, while I'm telling you about that, let me just tell you a little bit about wisteria. The tendrils come out, and they're searching, searching for something that they can coil around a branch or something. And once they land, then these leaves start forming. And you could have very small leaves. You would use your fine detail brush, OK? And the leaves still alternate on either side, like so. And it's a very light touch on the paper. And that's pretty much the story on wisteria leaves. What is nice to do, say that you have your blossom area here, you could have isolated leaves coming out of the sides, like so. And they would aid in your composition. I've already discussed painting a bamboo leaf, which is done without moving the fingers at all. It's just land and take off. The next leaf that I discussed was the wisteria. And that starts out, you're going to be moving your fingers slightly because it's no pressure, then press down, and then you follow that tip through and release. And you can see the difference at the top between these two leaves. Now. Both of these are what is called a centered brush stroke. And that means that the tip of the brush is always in the center of the stroke. So you can see that the tip remained in the center all the way through. There's also a stroke that's called a wipe stroke. And by this, you're going to be wiping the paper with your brush and it's done like this. The brush is held at a little more than a 45 degree angle and the tip is placed down and then you wipe the paper and flick that tip back into the stroke. And so it's about that point that you flick it back in. And that way you'll get a better ending point and you won't get a water spot. And if you want that to be larger, you come to about this point here Notice I'm dropping down to about there, and then wipe again and flick back up, okay? And your stem would be here. All right, so I've mentioned many times that the pressure on the brush is very light. You don't want to be pressing down more than a third on the brush, okay? Because that'll give you a better release on your stroke. With this stroke, with a centered brush, if you feel that it's not wide enough, merely go alongside of it and do another. If you put too much pressure on the brush, you're going to lose control. You'll lose control of the tip and you won't be able to follow through. 
We've already discussed doing centered brush strokes to paint leaves and also the wipe stroke. But what about something that's rather a combination of the two, such as the begonia leaf, which is heart-shaped? To do this, again, the brush would be held at slightly more than a 45 degree angle. You would land the tip on the paper and the heel and the midpoint would touch the paper and then you start releasing it almost immediately but gradually and then maintaining control of the tip you pull the brush on down like so so that would be half of the begonia leaf then in order to do the other half which will be easiest for you right-handed people, but more difficult for me because I have to cross over my body. Can you see that I'm crossing over? So it's a little bit of a blind stroke for me. So again, you land the brush and release the pressure on the midpoint gradually until you meet at the bottom. And then we have a begonia leaf. And you can vein or not vein. That's totally up to you. All right, so we've already discussed the wipe stroke, which is done like this, pulling back like so. But what does the side view of that look like? All right, so you would land the tip on the paper, press down, and pull back into the stroke, and then about a third of the way up, you would do the same thing. Pull back into the stroke. So you can see that's the side view of this. And then in order to show the other section, we're going to darken the tone slightly using indigo. And then where we have a V, you're going to be coming in, land the brush, and bounce that tip. And the tip follows the first line you've created. But you want this coastline to vary. So that would be a turning leaf, like so. And one more that we could discuss would be the centered brush stroke, but the leaf is turning. So it's no pressure, press down, and then release that pressure to form a straight line at this point. All right, again, we're going to darken the tip of the brush with indigo. And then where that straight line is, you're going to come in, no pressure, press and pull on down. All right, now, these are the major strokes for doing most leaves. But if you're having a problem painting any leaf, let me know and I'd love to do a demonstration for you. That's all for today. Bye now.